A common question paleontologists get around this time of year is how did the dinosaurs fornicate? How did they reproduce? How did they mate? Or more bluntly, how did they fuck? The easy answer to how dinosaurs reproduced is carefully. I mean, they would have been multiple tons and oftentimes had spikes and plates and all kinds of other things that could potentially get in the way. But we know they were able to do this. I mean, we have entire fields full of fossilized dinosaur eggs, specifically of very large things like titanosaurs. So we know they were able to successfully reproduce, it's just a matter of how do they actually make that work? How are the logistics for that? Now the easy answer is carefully, but that's not really the informative answer. So we can look at other pieces of evidence and try and understand what they may have been doing. And one of the best pieces of evidence for this is actually trace fossils. And there's a few different ones that I want to mention, the first of which are actually just probably display markers, where essentially a large theropod was scratching into the dirt and probably doing this in a fairly ritualistic manner. It was doing a display dance probably. But we have other trace fossils too from theropod dinosaurs, so these would be the two-legged meat-eating ones. And it's actually of these kinds of dinosaurs on all fours. Now there's not another dinosaur immediately there, at least from what we can tell in the fossils, so it wasn't mating, but I think this kind of behavior of being able to get down on all fours is really important to understand. And that's because simply if you have two very large heavy animals and one of them gets on the ground, it's going to spread out the weight of the other animal, and that could potentially make it a lot easier to mate. They didn't necessarily need to be standing the way we see with large animals today, including things like elephants. Essentially, we just need to move a little bit away from this kind of mammal-centric idea of all of these mammals needing to stand while they reproduce. That doesn't really seem to be the case for dinosaurs. They probably didn't need to do that. Of course, that only answers so much, especially when you're looking at things like Stegosaurus or some of the Ankylosaurus with large, complex structures across their back. And that's especially true of things like Stegosaurus. You can't really get on top of it and mate in that way the way we see in most other animals. So potentially they just both laid down, which would be interesting, but you can imagine them both being next to each other, laying down, and then making the magic happen that way. It's odd to think about it in that kind of a sense, but the thing is, as long as it works, it's really not that big of a deal. Especially since mating may not have taken that long, especially when we look at modern day birds. Dinosaurs, like all reptiles, including the birds, would have had a cloaca, which is kind of a one-stop hole for pee, poop, and anything else. But the thing is, some birds engage in what's called a cloacal kiss, which means essentially the cloaca just touch each other and there's the exchange of material. But there's not anything that's actually inserted, there's no external organs that are needed for that kind of process. That said, some birds do have external organs for that kind of exchange of genetic material. Most infamously, ducks, which if you know, you know. It's also important to acknowledge that ducks are pretty early diverging birds. They actually diverged from their closest relatives, the chickens and their relatives, before the extinction that killed off the non-bird dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous, when the giant rock came down and hit the planet. So it's very likely that most dinosaurs did still have organs for the exchange of genetic material. This is especially true when you look at modern day crocodilians, which also have those organs. This also tracks with other evidence coming from Cetacosaurus, a ceratopsian that was actually fossilized in such a way that you can see the cloaca, or at least the remnants of it and it would have had a more vertically oriented cloaca, which would make it more similar to that of crocodilians, as opposed to birds, where it shifted to become more horizontal relative to the body. So it's pretty likely that these organisms were pretty crocodilian-like in the way they were reproducing. Additionally, it's really interesting because there's a few extra lumps of material there that suggest it probably held some sort of scent gland in the cloaca. Modern day crocodilians do this as well. They're able to produce musky scents and pheromones from their cloaca, Dinosaurs probably did the same thing. I also just want to mention that crocodilians can still be very large, with, for example, saltwater crocodiles being well over a ton in weight. So they can get fairly large, and it's really important to understand that this kind of large size doesn't preclude them from being able to mate. They also mate well on the ground, so it very much seems like this is one of those kind of behaviors that could be very easily adopted by at least certain groups of reptiles, including the archosaurs, which dinosaurs are. That said, they also could have been doing something entirely different. And for this example, I'm actually gonna take the humble plethodont salamanders because they don't actually engage with one another directly. They pair off, but then the male drops a packet containing the genetic information to be transferred. And then the female is able to pull that up into her body cavity and fertilize the eggs that way. So maybe that's what was happening. It also could be something where the eggs got laid by some of these large species and then the male fertilized them 
it's hard to know for sure. That would certainly be strange for tetrapods, especially land-based tetrapods, but it's not impossible. With that in mind, I think it's really important to just highlight again, biology can be messy and weird. There's a lot of different life strategies for reproduction in many different animals. So we can't necessarily just say the dinosaurs absolutely did it one way, unless we happen to come across an incredible fossil of two dinosaurs caught in the act. And that would be really hard because those soft tissues don't really fossilize. For example, if they had that kind of organ that would be able to be present, it'd be a soft tissue that's not necessarily as tough as skin. That's why when you have these dinosaur mummies, they're still missing their internal organs and the muscle. There's still the skin on top of the bone, sure, but everything underneath that skin is gone. And so there's a lot of ideas, and some of them are good. Some of them are also pretty terrible, such as the idea that the dinosaurs may have needed sex lakes. And this comes from the book Too Big to Walk, the new science on dinosaurs. And unfortunately, it's really not that new. In fact, it's basically been disproven as far back as the 1950s. It basically ignores the last 70 years of paleontological research. The book came out in 2018, though, which is an issue, especially with the audacity to put in the subtitle, The New Research on Dinosaurs, or whatever it is. The idea proposed in the book is essentially dinosaurs were so big, they absolutely needed water to support the weight of the other animals. And the reason they went extinct is because all of the water dried up and they couldn't reproduce anymore. The problem with this idea is we have very large dinosaurs from very dry environments like deserts, and seemingly they got along just fine. Also, there's plenty of other small dinosaurs that also went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous. So sudden drying of sex lakes really doesn't seem that likely when all of the dinosaurs are even just 500 pounds. Perfectly reasonable weight for animals to be able to reproduce without much question. Also went extinct. It's just, it's a terrible idea that, again, just ignores basically everything that's been done in the field for the last 70 years. So how do dinosaurs do the deed? carefully, and there's a few different ideas as to how they were actually able to work out the logistics of that, and actually position their bodies in order to do that successfully without harming each other significantly. And whatever the case is and how they got it to work, just rest assured knowing it did work. Life did find a way. Hey everyone, thanks for watching, and a big thanks to my wife who edited this video, and believe it or not, searching animals having sex sometimes doesn't bring up exactly what you're expecting as far as accurate nature photos. So everyone, please give her a big thanks.